My name is Dan Overhauser. What we do here is we sell pretty much all salvage, but most of it's new stuff in the window and door. It's just products that get discontinued by corporations and manufacturers. And the stuff that we have is current stock to somebody, but it's different distributors use different stock and they'll change vendors and then we end up with it. To Dan Overhauser, the term salvage is a godsend. For over 40 years, he has built a successful business that he and his wife Brenda have continued to grow and operate in the Spokane area. Housed inside a six-story building built in 1908, Overhauser, over time, has turned it and adjacent structures into a warehouse that holds myriad treasures destined to be explored. The key to success is doing the same thing for a lot of years. A lot of people think that success comes, you know, overnight, and it doesn't. You know, it's a lot of work. If you keep going in the same direction, you basically get good at it after so many years. With a background honed in the glass glazing business at Custom Glass in Spokane back in the early 1970s, Dan parlayed his skills in glazing to an on-the-side business that played to his skills of being a people person. I got too busy, and basically when I quit, I had 300 bucks in a truck, and I went to work. I, I like talking to people, and most people are pretty interesting. Some of them are tough to deal with, but that's just human nature. <laughs> Most people are generally good and they're interesting to talk to. Although the window and door market has been a mainstay to the overhousers, the collecting and selling of antiques has been an ongoing desire that has followed Dan since he was a youngster. Well, I've always been interested in salvage. Even as a kid, I drug stuff home. It just kind of formed into this after all these years. You keep dragging enough stuff home, pretty soon you got a whole warehouse full. Some people don't have value of this stuff and some people do. But we all have something that we desire and that we chase after. I just appreciate good craftsmanship. Sometimes you don't pay nothing for something and it's just a little item, but you can see the workmanship in it and it's, that's the value in it to me more so than anything. It's like those columns in the back, those walnut columns. I mean, the woodwork on that is just spectacular but they were probably in the 1840s. Somebody didn't make much money making those, but spectacular work. Spectacular work, like these copper-plated quarter-inch iron elevator cages from the Empire State Building in downtown Spokane, or some cast iron pieces that he acquired from London. The dragon heads off of the castle. Those are medieval and those are fantastic. They're kind of whimsical looking, they're fun to look at, but they probably have a lot of value, but they're more fun to look at because well, they just make you smile because they've got a fork and tongue. And, I mean, dragons are cool today, but being from the medieval times, to even see something like that is spectacular to me. This is an RC plane collection that I bought down in McMinnonville from a friend of mine. It was a, a machinist that passed away and his kids sold it to a friend of mine. And uh, basically there was about 180 planes total. It was just an interesting collection and something that I thought I'd mess with. Uh, it's a lot of hours of somebody's time in this. I mean, like that uh, plane there, he said the guy had two years time in it plus 2,500 bucks. You look at this and you look at the man hours that are in it, it's just pretty amazing. There's stuff probably from the 30s in here all the way up to a few years ago. When you buy something like this, you've got to kind of enjoy it and it takes it's not a mundane thing because it's real interesting and, and the learning experience is interesting. While roaming around the Overhauser's building, the likelihood of stumbling across a treasure is probable, given that Dan has a penchant for collecting desirable, sublime objects that have caught his attention. In his desire to learn something new about something old, he has purchased collectibles, like these planters and this light fixture from the Davenport Hotel or the troll that was acquired from the now defunct Cyrus O'Leary's in downtown Spokane. Or this collection of movie memorabilia acquired from a woman in California and a friend in Oregon. This is a three sheet movie poster. This is Harry Carey. This has been restored. This come out of a collection out of California. This was a good friend of uh, Roy Rogers. He had this collection, but this has been restored. It's got a backing on it. And then we have like a six sheet here. This is a Roy Rogers trigger one and this is kind of a 
a rarity. You don't see very many six sheets. You know, the guy only had two of these, so this kind of gives you an idea how big. And that's something you don't see every day. It's a real desirable thing. You can put a piece of plexiglass or glass over it and preserve it forever. What may be junk to some can be treasure to another. And believe it or not, even though Dan treasures these collectible artifacts, it's mostly all for sale. It's always the hunt is better than owning something. And I mean, that's the way with anything. You know, it's just buying something. The negotiation part of it is more fun than actually owning it. As far as keeping it, I have no desire to really keep it forever. It's, it's interesting to have something for a while and it's enjoyable, but you know, when it goes, it's not a sad thing either. Sometimes I do pay too much for something, but I learn a good lesson that way. But most of the time, I'd say 95% of the time, I'm pretty spot on. There's that little bit of learning curve that is a good thing. If you have an idea for Northwest Profiles, send it to KSBS TV, 3911 South Regal, Spokane, Washington 99223. Northwest Profiles is a presentation of KSBS Public Television.